boom, we are live. Hello and welcome everybody to the Wild World Warhammer. With me today is the Tyranid expert, the man, the myth, the legend, Rowan Throke himself. Hey, new bud. Hey, mate. How are you? Yeah, Tyranid <laughs> expert here. I'm good. Um, um, yeah, look, it's just another cold day in Canberra at the moment. And I'm just, uh, yeah, excited to talk bugs because I love bugs. Absolutely. Hell to the air. I mean, look, what were your best in faction last year for Tyranids in Australia, South Pacific? Yeah, I did manage a like very late last minute run to burst in faction, and I was uh pretty decent the year before as well. But um, yeah, you know, I try my best. Oh look, you got to self indulge a little bit. Say so, like, I'm oh, the best in the world, and like just like with asterisks, I won it for the award <laughs> last year. So like, like, or best in Australia and stuff like that. So yeah, you got self indulge from time to time. Yeah, I think I got. I don't know what it was. It was pretty good for the world for Turnids. Um, it was like six. Oh, I can't remember. It was pretty good. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Um. It was- but yeah. Oh, humble, humble human being. So, um, so but with us today, we've got so, Rowan. So, um, so as we alluded to, a, a big tuned expert. And we're talking about faction specialization. So, uh, someone who I looked up to as being very loyal to his faction and like only plays the one thing. <laughs> his eyes wide. Oh, Jesus, what, what is this? But, um, uh, something I am definitely not part of i am as the tagline says polyamorous in my army loving and uh, i better chase from time to time for sure so but i want to understand more of that (laughs) look i like to say tunis is my favorite army of all time but i don't dedicate as much love to it as you do so but anyways i digress so um but before we jump into the random things um rowan for people who've never seen your beautiful face or heard of you or had a chance to play against you but where have they where maybe maybe have they heard of you and maybe rattle off some of your achievements so people can like go wow this guy's pretty cool this guy's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that's guaranteed, right? Uh, I'm just some idiot from Canberra who uh, has played 40k for a little while. And I only play Tyranids because, I don't know, I'm lazy. And I really like them. They're kind of cool. Uh, I've been playing for like, how long now? Maybe only really like three years competitively. Um, this is my third kind of proper like competitive year. Uh, play, playing mainly in and around Canberra, New South Wales. I make the trip to cool events sometimes, like Mint Uprising a couple of times couple this is my third year of going to ANZTC um and yeah like I kind of like 40k I'm getting a bit better at it um and yeah I just try and do cool stuff with Tyranids especially when I don't know a lot of people down on at the moment I don't really think they're that bad I think they could use a little bit of TLC here and there um but I also just love painting too like I've um like I said I only really have one army which is Tyranids and I have nearly 11,000 points painted um I mean that number's kind of getting higher and higher because I've just got a 3D printer as well. So I'm kind of I'm kind of bumping up those numbers. But um, yeah, main main thing to say about me is I am just an idiot and I make lots and lots of mistakes. So if I do end up playing people out there, um, that's one thing to remember. <laughs> but I, I think I, I like to think you you do pretty well generally. Uh, look, uh, there's no, no oh, there's rarely a game of perfect 40k ever. Like oh, people make mistakes even if they don't mean to do so. So it's okay, Rowan. It's okay, but. Yeah, despite yeah, despite yeah, whatever doesn't matter. I, I don't know where I was going to go with that. <laughs> you, you, you've been you've been my like uh, coach for two years, fans at TC Sam. You know, I'm an idiot. You know, I make dumb mistakes. I think mean, anyone who's on on my team knows I make such stupid mistakes. But I make lots of dumb mistakes, um, so I can I can learn from them. Right, I don't make mistakes again. Absolutely, That's what I like to tell. Always improve. Anyway. Positive mindset. Always improving. Always trying to get sure. better. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah, like. Yeah. You, you mentioned that it's so 11,000 points of dids, and uh, with the uh, resin 3D printer, things are just going to go up. Um, oh, no. It doesn't stop. I'm sorry, buddy. It. it doesn't help at all. It's like, oh, this is a cool file. Let me go print this. Oh, look, here's another couple of boys. <laughs> so, um, with so why Tyranids, though? So, of all the factions in the game, why Tyranids? Why the beloved bugs? Um, I think I just love the like aesthetic. Also, let me know if I'm like breaking up a little bit because you'll break up a little bit then. But um, oh, I just love the aesthetic. I think there's really cool models. Like I um, I started collecting them when I was like a kid when like Battle from a Crag came out, and I just kind of loved those little stupid Gene Steelers and Termigants. I just love like I don't know the, the look. Um, and I think actually like it was back when I was playing Dawn of War one as well. There was like a cool mod that came out for Tyranids because they weren't in the actual game. I think it was a combination of like that and Battle from a Crag that kind of like kicked it all off. I I remember back because it was back when I was like, I don't know, this big. This big maybe. Um I remember thinking like the coolest thing in the world to have would be a flying high tyrant. Because that was back in the day when there wasn't a plastic kit for it. There was the cool Forge World one and a whole bunch of people would like convert up their own flying high tyrants. But for me, as like a however many years old, like a twelve year old, I was like, man, 
flying high tyrants. I get that. That's like life made. Um, and then like a lot of people, when you're a kid, you kind of fall out of Warhammer because it's expensive. And who has money? Um, and then one day, maybe like, I don't know, five or six years ago, I was like, oh, I can just buy one, right? I can just go and buy a flying hive tyrant. And so I did, and I painted it up. And I was like, man, like tyrants are still so cool. Um, and I guess like another reason why I like them is like law wise, they kind of just, they kind of fucked, right? They kind of have like, like they're the big bad. I th- well, not they're really the big bad, but they're one of the big bads and they kind of can't really be negotiated with. They just kind of rock up, um, fuck your shit up and then, and then eat you and keep going. I don't know. I kind of like that they're just so otherworldly and, you know, impossible to kind of relate to um so yeah love the style love the lore and uh i normally find a pretty fun way to play them too in all the editions i've played so far so uh yeah i'm just a just a big big nerd for tyranids nothing wrong with that buddy i mean that balfour crack box was also one of the reasons i fell in love with tyranids initially yeah. and i um big, all those right? gene, Steel, yeah, gene steals are still like even though i haven't had the chance to play with them a lot since maybe eighth edition like they're still my favorite unit of all time i just have so much nostalgia and fondness for them so um look if, give me a chance to Bring out the, the gene stealers and tyrannism, and I'm thanking for it. So I love it so much. So, um, but so have you always? So obviously, you said you shared the love for the great devourer that is tyrannids. Um, and but you've been playing for three years, and you've basically only played tyrannids. Is that correct? Like, do you play other armies? Um, I have tried a couple of times. Um, when that cool chaos knight army box came out last year, uh, I was like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, I kind of dig the vibe of Chaos, and uh, those new Night models are pretty awesome. So I bought some, and I even built a couple of those models, and then I was just like, ah, pff, this is too much effort. I don't know how to paint something that's not by, uh, like uh, organic. Uh, so I kind of gave up. Um, I have I have played one game of Grey Knights once on TTS, um, and that was pretty bad. And I guess like Space Marines when I was younger, but everyone's been there. Um, it's not like I don't like any other factions. I'm just, I don't know. I'm always finding new ways to play Tyranids and fun things to do with them. So I'm like, like literally even right now when I'm talking, I'm just kind of like staring off screen at my two like Norns. I'm literally just like, oh man, like how cool is that? Like, fuck. Oh, yeah, they are so pretty cool. fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm definitely like open to new things. Um, and I know a lot of my teammates are pretty keen for me to please try something new. Not for their like hatred of Tyranids. They're like, just come on around. Stop. I can start, try diversifying a little bit um and i'm sure i'll get there one day i, I tried like uh, age of sigma for a little while because there were some cool models there i played like a uh, i painted up some night haunt because they were kind of cool some groovy models but um that game kind of isn't my jam i don't have a big enough or wrinkly enough brain to handle the whole double turn thing so i'm just like ah, fuck this whole thing um and i also really like the style of uh like the lizard men like age, uh, the seraphon in age of sigma but i think that's just also my like another reason I like Tyrion is they're kind of just like dinosaurs and i'm still like a three-year-old in the brain so um that's kind of yeah where i'm coming from but yeah i'm open to trying new things as soon as there's a reason to yeah so what would that reason be that you make the switch like obviously so you've played two minutes basically exclusively for the past three and a bit years so um during ninth edition and now 10th but what would that reason be for you to make a switch um, i guess if they were like i think even if Tyranids really sucked and were just like the worst faction in the game barely even fun to play i'd probably still play them a lot but i'd probably look at changing a faction for like teams uh just because you don't you know want to willingly be an anchor for your team um so that'd be a big one i think and i've definitely considered that in the last couple of years uh like the first year i was on like a a state team the tyranny ninth edition codex just came out so it was kind of like you're playing tyranids congratulations um and that was i mean I, i look back at that and i'm like i was still glad i guess in the big picture pretty new to 40k and I didn't take advantage of the fuck shit you could do in that book. Like, I had one Malaceptor. I had, like, one half. It's like, what are you doing? Just, like, I only ran, like, 12 Warriors, something like that. Like, oh, my God. I needed to uh, probably... Uh, yeah, I regret not taking advantage of the the gross stuff you could do back then. Um, but then last year, um, around this time, uh, Tyranids were, like... I think everyone kind of forgot about them. Um, and, I, and I, I still thought there was a bit of play there, and I was considering playing a different army, you know, whatever the team needed. And then I kind of found something cool to do with Tyranids, which was, I don't think a lot of people saw coming, which was that big, stupid Kronos monster mash, which did pretty well. Um, I'm still happy I was the only person brave enough to take Tyranids to ANZTC and still went 4-1. Um, so, yeah, like, and, and right now, obviously, Tyranids are great for teams. So maybe in a year's time, they'll be, they'll be terrible because they'll still be on their, you know, two-year-old codex, and it'll all just be crap. Uh, but... If that day happens, I will happily branch out. But if you see me at a GT, I'll probably still be playing Tyranids. Maybe if they bring out a yeah. new army. Maybe if there's a new Xeno army that 
is kind of like dinosaurs. Exodites. I'd play Exodites. There you go. So there you go. You, you, so you you'd be down for some L's, but that's be wearing dinosaurs first. That's a. <laughs> it's 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 mainly the dinosaurs. To be honest, I think the elves may or may not make it onto the models. We'll see. Uh, I'd, I'd I'd figure something out. I'd probably just use lizard men for that. I think I'd be pretty sick. Again, there we go. There we go. Whatever. There you go. Perfect. There we go. Um, that sounds more reasonable. So you, you mentioned there though. So uh, the team being an important aspect, and so obviously you've been the captain for the ACT team for the past two years. Um, yeah. so if it was for a team event, would you drop two units if you felt as part of your lineup it wasn't valuable or worthwhile? Is that basically what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think um, like obviously it'd have to be like I mean. With how things currently are, it probably have to be like a totally different edition with a totally different rule set because Tyranids are just really versatile. And you can have like a bunch of different Tyranid builds that work well in teams at the moment. I think so anyway. Um, but yeah, for sure. Like if Tyranids were just not what the team needed, uh, I'd totally look into something else. Um, yeah, easy. And yeah, I think sure. I'm pretty knowledge knowledgeable about the game. Well, I think I am anyway. Uh, I'd hopefully not take too long to pick up another, another army. I don't think I could take like one of the more complex ones and just run with it. But I'd, I'd probably go through the ringer and then pick up a few things, I hope. Yeah, sure. I think that's pretty fair. I mean, people who are well known as like faction experts, like your Mitch Spears, your Scaris, who are like oh, Sisters of Battle and Drakari, respectively, at the past World Team Championships, they played CSM and Necrons. Because, oh, sorry, Necrons because their own armies were deemed not good enough. So, the, for the team environment, I can see uh, why uh, faction specialists do have to drop their army uh, for the greater good, uh, per se. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned that you mentioned they so you're pretty well versed and you understand the meta or armor armies. Well, how do you try and do that being a faction specialist? Do you like read up on other armies or is it via playing um, the actual army? Because so for my, for my own sake, uh, learning an army, like for example, like Black Templar Ironstorm, I would have to either play it myself or read up on about it or play against it to try and understand what the hell it does. How do you try and, I guess, understand it? Like when you try and understand um, the meta on other armies? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can... You, you can learn a fair bit through reading, but I think the best thing to do is just play against it and hopefully play against someone who's really good um like we've got um despite the fact you know we've got i guess a pretty small population here in canberra we have some really good players a lot of them just don't travel um which is i guess a shame in some ways but it means that um for the team here we get awesome practice against these crazy players um and that's i think what has helped me become better like i think back to my run at adelaide this year um like in the two weeks previous, I'd played like a hectic Necrons player, hectic Sisters player, hectic Eldar player, um, hectic World Eaters player, right? And those were a lot of the factions I then played at Adelaide. And I was like, man, thank God I played this th these matchups recently against someone who was better than me because it meant I was so well prepared for this. Um, and that's also, honestly probably where I also fell down at Adelaide is I hadn't played against that cool Vanguard Ultramarines list uh, until... Adelaide and I was like still I, I guess I, you, you, like you said you can read up about things and you can know on paper what they do but until you've had that real sort of trial by fire on the table um you're always kind of gonna miss a few things uh so yeah, it's just getting 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 reps against factions being played by good people um that's kind of how I approach it anyway and just get hit yeah, sure, games. It's just like learn, learn like get as many games in as you can so you can kind of know okay not only this is what their army does this is what my army can do against it and maybe this is what a variation in my list might help with yeah, sure. And so you said like the variation on this list may help, but you play like tons of games and only with Tyranids. And obviously, yeah. as you may change the list and you change units in and out, like you still have that baseline understanding of, oh, well, the damage output will be this, or I can do this, I can do this play, and how things play. So that makes sense. So when you're sort of, I guess, discovering other armies and stuff like that, I just wanted to, I guess, elaborate more is, are you doing that personal practice? So when you're discussing playing against Sisters of Battle or World Eaters, is that because you're an experience of Tunids versus World Eaters or Tunids versus Sisters of Battle? Or is it because, like, maybe in your play group, oh, people have played against World Eaters and Sisters and I can roughly equate, equate what one does against the other and put it in my own perspective? Yeah, okay, yeah. I guess it's kind of tough because Tyranids kind of do a few things. They do a, a, lo a lot of little things that other factions do. So I can, I, can, I, I know what my game plan into Sisters is as Tyranids or, or, or whatever other faction. I look at another faction, it's like, okay, well, they would be doing this, but not this. So I, I, I guess it's kind of hard, right? Like, I, And that would be what would be, I guess, pretty challenging to step into another faction is it's like, oh, well, I'm used to have, being quite fast and also having disposable trash and move blocks and decent combat and sometimes good shooting and good reinforcements and good screening. It's like, okay, well, I'm probably not going to tick all those boxes with it when I pick up another army. Maybe I will. I don't know. Sisters seem to have a lot of this. Anyway, um, so I guess it's kind of hard, but um, I can't exactly remember what the point of your 
what your question was. I was going to say, so, so what, what, how do you do your study? Is it is your study via oh, sure. yourself playing games, or is it by? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, yeah. Also, no. So locally, you're like I'll name some people. So Dale and Ewitt, so they play their own respective yeah, factions sure. and then play against these things, and they maybe report to you and you're okay what their experience is. So, for example, um, let's yeah, say, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I think, their I factions. Think, I mean, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, right. Like, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I try to do as much in person as I can, obviously, because that's you know the best way to learn. But then also, like, we're currently doing a whole bunch of TTS stuff. Um, just watching their games for what is so good. Again, like watching Dale play Eldar is really good. And the next step to that is Dale playing you while he's playing Eldar, and you're like, oh fuck, okay, this is kind of what I know. This is probably about as bad as it's gonna get if I'm playing an Eldar player, right? Because he's very meticulous, and it feels like a lot of the time he's just kind of um, in your head more than you're in your own um so yeah like the first hand experience is best but then just watching stuff as much as you can watching their games on tts like i i am running a league at the moment our local store and and, and there's a sort of rtt series and even when i'm in there and there's um i'm not playing that night i'll just go around and watching the games and seeing how people react to stuff and what also works against some of those spooky factions being played by spooky players and being like okay i'm gonna remember that yeah, you can understand that, um, appreciate that. So does it make it hard? So being obviously part of the team environment is sometimes evaluating how other armies do into other things. So um, like, for example, oh, like, yeah, how other armies do into other things. Do you find it hard for yourself being someone who's only generally played the one faction to provide advice? Or do you find it okay because you study and read up a lot? So for example, if you have a struggling, I don't know, Adnec player, let's <laughs> say if you have a struggling <laughs> Adnec player and they... um. They're looking to get advice on how to improve their list or improve into certain matchups. Do you find it hard to provide advice because you only view it from a tuned lens, or um, is, yeah, it, get, is, yeah. is it okay for you? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, that's a pretty extreme example. If, if an admec player came to me and was like, "Hey, man, what do I do?" I'm kind of like, "I've played against uh, one admec player twice, and it's the Greek, and he knows what he's doing. He doesn't need my advice." So, I I could tell him what was. I, I would tell that hypothetical person, "Hey, man, this is really good." It's also probably miserable to play <laughs> with or against. Um, so I guess that's a bit of an extreme example, but I, I've played against, you know, our, our, our like the people on our team so many times. Like if, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of the tricks that those factions all do. So I, I think I can still offer pretty good advice. And even just looking at like, um, you know, like a, a matchup matrix, like you can be like, okay, well, this person's put this color against this faction. I'd, I'd at least want to question that and be like, hey, why do you think it's that? Um, and have you considered this, which might be quite good in this matchup? Um, and also you can also question when someone thinks, oh yeah, easy, I'll smash them. It's like, oh, <laughs> do you know about do you know about this? Or are you just putting this down as a, a green because you kicked the shit out of a Votan player one time? Um, I mean, we've all been there, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that, that's great. That's um, good to hear. So um, obviously diversifying and it's, uh, be able to get experience uh, other experiences so obviously for yourself so being someone who's dedicated to a faction um how do you try and improve your own game because sometimes oh, in the local scene sometimes you maybe not have another person to rely on or like i guess uh, talk with do you have like your own international community or more nationalized community like a discord or a facebook group or do you just go to comp 40k and just pray that there won't be some good advice <laughs> there uh that's a funny one like I i'm in um like a couple of, there's a big turn of discord and there's like a few other sort of competitive discords and um facebook pages reddit all that stuff i don't know if there's a lot of it's hard because i guess those big communities generally have like a like a, a lot of people who, who might be struggling and they um there's a lot of sort of loud voices um who maybe see everything through a certain lens um i guess starting locally there's not really a lot of other Tyranid players in camera i think there's quite a few um but a lot of them kind of stick to other factions or um i guess don't make as many appearances at some of our local events um but i know that you know a lot of people especially on our team are pretty familiar with tyrannies just from playing me quite a lot so they can definitely offer good advice and they know especially when we're building up something like teams they know what the uh you know the purpose of my list is in a game they know what it's trying to do so they can um definitely offer helpful advice and even just plan for games so there's a lot of useful resources and people i use locally um and in Australia too, there's a bunch of very good tuner players that I've, that I've spoken to. It gets, it gets kind of tricky, yeah, when, like I said, when you're talking about like a larger global community, like I might put, you know, the list I'm currently working on up on like, you know, the, the Tyranid uh, Reddit or one of the Facebook pages. And they were like, this is a shit list. These are shit units. Why are you taking this? It's like, ah, I mean, I, I mean, people I play against think that too. And, um, and even I do sometimes as well. But I, I guess it's hard to look at like a, 
big picture thing when you've got all sorts of different voices. Um, and and, and uh, the general sentiment for Tyranids at the moment is kind of like they suck, at least from Tyranid players in the communities, which is not ideal. Um, and I mean, I can kind of understand where they're coming from too, given they're the launch faction for the edition and maybe some of their stats kind of aren't comparable with other, other factions. Um, there's a lot of discussions about what could be done to fix Tyranids, but a lot of the time that's just people like doing a little wish list of things that make them absolutely busted. Um, but yeah, so I guess there's, there's all sorts of people to lean on, but it's mainly local people. I lean on people who um, are just very, have very good game knowledge and um, are generally always happy to chat. Yeah, sure. That makes makes sense. And it, it's hard, obviously, when you reach out to the international community. Like, look, people play on different terrain boards. They have different approaches. Like, they respect to damage or objective scoring more than one or the other. Or they don't play in a yeah, team's yeah. environment. They're playing in singles. So it's uh, very hard to digest. And uh, people have their, their own opinions. I mean, yeah. Especially yeah, in a book sure. as diverse as Tyranids is. Like, it can be very... Um, uh, yeah, it can be hard to agree. It's like someone says, all oh, invasions are best. You play that, those endless storms are best. Like you have that discussion yeah, sure. in between. That, that's exactly it. Like I'll always keep an eye on like the Meta Mondays and like the uh, Goonhammer weekly reports and stuff on what's doing well. And I'm always like, I'm always just scrolling, looking for a tier in the list to check out. And yeah, a lot of people, yeah, the sentiment is man invasion fleet rocks because it's so all rounder. It's really solid. And if you're not taking that, what are you doing? And, and I get that. It's, it's invasion fleet rocks. Um, but I mean, there's even like tiered podcasts out there that say uh, invasion, then endless. Then if you kind of try, if you, if you really want to take synaptic, everything else sucks. It's like, well, geez, sucks when you can barely get two of your sub six sub factions out. Um, so I think there's there's a, yeah, there's a certain sentiment out there about a lot of tiered and stuff. But if you're not taking invasion or endless, you're kind of wasting your time, which um, I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with. I think there's I don't know. Uh, like recently, I've been playing. I even, I even have been running Crusher Stampede recently. Now, I don't think it's good at all. I think, I think it does suck. Uh, but it is hella fun to play. Like that shit is so much fun. Stratagems are really good. Army rules terrible. Um, but it's just, it's it takes me back to when I first started playing Tyrants, and I'm like, I am going to put twelve models on the table, and they're all big monsters, and I'm going to run at you. How much fun? That sounds. I mean, who doesn't love that, right? Like, tell me someone who doesn't love that. I'll tell you a liar. I mean, that's straight <laughs> up. So, obviously, so right there. So you said like the general consensus. It's hard to break, and like you get criticised for running something that's maybe seen as suboptimal. But how do you sort of break that mold or try and come up with a new idea for you? Is it simply like hampering your expectations? So, for example, while you're playing Crusher Stampede, you're like, look, I know this isn't optimal, but I think I want to explore this a bit more. Or is there like maybe something a part of it? Like, is it I don't know. Is there something different to it that you try and do? So like maybe hand yeah, expectations or when you're trying new units, like the Harris specs, for example, maybe it's like, oh, okay, it is cheap. It's a cheap model. It has a cool utility, but how do I explore this more? Like you just run it and see how you go or like, what's that, what's that process for discovering new things essentially? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the good thing is there's plenty of like bat battle reps you can check out there, which are people running Tyranids are doing some weird wonky things. Um, and there's already some pretty well-established archetypes trying to find something new. I mean, is, is a little bit more challenging, but like I've in the last few months been trying like a, quite a few different things and things that, again, like I, I'm trying to keep things fun as well, like fun to play. Um, for teams, obviously I've got to like, you know, some good ideas of what the, the best things are and the things that we will probably end up seeing at ANZTC or end up running excuse me um but um, whenever i'm testing some new things out i'm like can i see myself repping this like doing 30 more games of this <laughs> like is this something i want to do um and i think yeah like i'm, I'm, I'm not it's, it's not like it's my job right like i've always wanted to have fun whenever i play even if it's a bit more of a serious um environment so that's a big one for me is just try fun things out give them a test run if they work great like there's some things i know i don't need to try out like I, there's no point where i'll run a hive crone or a sporocyst or a tyrannocyte probably not um and there's some things i'll probably put in every list just because they rock uh, or are i don't know just too good so yeah i i, I enjoy this take kind of taking the concept and running with it like i wrote a list earlier this week just to see if it would fit you can put six norns and a hive tyrant and a biovore in a list and i'm gonna try that and just see how Hell, it goes yeah because i think it kind of it, it, it kind of sucks a bit but it's also probably gonna win a bunch of games just because it's a big stat check of these six big dumb idiots with armor of contempt running around just get up to mischief um yeah so 
like it's long story short i like just putting shit on the table figuring it out and um making it fun hopefully me and my opponent hopefully <laughs> well yeah i'm sure uh, look obviously uh, i guess you, you're a gentleman and uh, 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 the game yeah, and a good no, play no, no one enjoys playing against endless swarm sam that's the thing Ah, look, so maybe some masochists love playing against it. Just like they love the, the the feeling of just killing all these bugs over and over again. So but I just want to uh, um understand a bit more there. So when you talk about obviously you're playing tunits exclusively, and I've personally experienced this as well in my practice game. So playing custodes right now, people are like, oh my yeah. god, do I have to play against custodes again in the practice <laughs> game? So how do you try and I guess for you and your teammates, like obviously when you're wrapping a lot of things, it's like oh, I know Rowan's playing tunits. Do I really have to play against Rowan? I've played this matchup five <laughs> or six times. I don't want to play it again. So how do you try and keep it fun and engaging for your our teammates and opponents? Or is that something you consider yeah, maybe sure. you don't play? Um, yeah, good question. I think it's always like, for, for, especially for the people on the team, it's always just a good test because a lot of the like the uh, archetypes I've been playing are Com- well, not commonly seen, but seen in other factions too. Like it might be a melee pressure. It might be very durable. It might be um, something like Endless... Well, I guess Endless Swarm's kind of its own cup of tea, but it's something that... They're- it's not like they're going to get nothing out of playing that game. And it might be the case that, you know, I go first with this list and they don't leave the deployments over three turns. And yeah, that-, that sucks, but it's also good to see how you... So- if you're going to play it, like, you know, at a-, a national level, how you handle that kind of pressure and to not let yourself sort of, um, you know not to lose the plot and be like, oh, well, the game's over, what's the point? Um, like, for example, uh, we had a cute little scrim between ACT and New South Wales on the weekend. Um, and I, I paired into Nathan Princey and his custodies. And already I'm like, this matchup kind of sucks for me. This isn't something I really want, but let's just see. What, what, let's see, how bad can it be? Well, not how bad can it be? How bad, you know, what can I make of it? And I and I mean, I, I, I also made a few mistakes pretty early on and he went first. It's like, okay, this is pretty uh, on, on like priority targets too so but that was like like nathan kicked the shit out of me right it was like a really strong win for custodies and i now know that hey next time i play that game i'm going to be done doing so much better like i learned so much from that horrible not horrible game but my horrible result in that game um and i like to think that's something similar that happens when i play someone else too and it's just a horrible matchup and, and i go first and it's bad news for them at least they're learning like okay well I could do this this differently next time. Um, like the, I, I've played the couple of times in the last few months. I've played um, uh, Dale, um, Dale Man. Like it's we get through like three battle rounds because we're too busy thinking because we're both playing these stupid fucking thinking man's armies. I like to think so anyway. Um, but every time it's like a different result just because like okay we're just not going to get this thing that we got wrong last time. Right, we're just going to think a little bit harder. We're going to play on a different mission. We're going to see how it changes, and that's super valuable. I think just um if you do happen to just run into that same guy again with the same list, okay, well, I'm going to do it better than last time. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, that's great. Great to understand and great advice for people who think, oh, look, I've run this matchup like three times. I know it's going to happen. Well, playing a different mission, who goes for first, who goes second. Yeah, you don't yeah. make these critical mistakes or if someone does something completely different, some th- random things can happen. So good to hear. Um, We have a question in the chat. So uh, for people who are listening on the podcast feeds, we do this generally live. We have Aiden asking, so Rowan, your nitties at Uprising awesome. I agree that the red, the red and black is magnifique. But obviously you need more Carnifexes. I mean, who doesn't love Carnifexes, honestly? Oh God, but yeah. um, how do you make Carnifexes good in 10th? And I want to question this I want to question this question. I think Carnifexes are fine. But Tyranid, uh, yeah. Rowan, you're the Tyranid expert. How do you think you make Carnifexes even better in 10th? Or oh, even better. Good? Oh, well, okay, so I, th- I think at the moment um, they've got a really good home, obviously an invasion fleet led by Old One-Eye because they just get reroll hits. You stick as many guns on them as you can. I think the, the go-to build is uh, to... Kind of is each with two sets of double death spitters, the bioplasma and the spine banks, and you're like, hey, here's uh what is it like 12 plus 5, 17, 17 plus D3 blast shots per kind of effects. Uh re-rolling all hits and in invasion fleet, you get lethals or sustained. Uh, and with what re-rolls, that turns into really good shooting, really good overwatch on a platform that you shoot at them and they move. And then old one eye is also there, and he's a bit of a blender in combat, especially with four reroll hits. So I think that is like the best kind of kind of is you can do at the moment. Um, I think there's some room for them in <laughs> in uh, if, if you want to go really hard at the, on the monsters, there's room for them in Crusher Stampede too, where I came up with this idea where Crusher Stampede sucks, right? Because uh, all the agency is with your opponent to damage your monsters to give them plus one to hit, maybe plus one to wound. Here's the thing, uh, and I guess, you know, the secret's out for everyone who plays against Crusher Stampede. You, you position your entire army within six inches of a lone Carnifex who's out in the open. 
Obviously, your opponent shoots and kills it, and then you spend one CP to auto explode it, dealing one mortal to every monster in your army, and now your entire army is plus one to hit. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Carnifexes. Um, but I think Carnifex is also kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a bit lame. They only hit on fours in, in tenth. That kind of doesn't seem right that they are these huge, crazy, you know, pure violence machines and they hit on fours. So I think if you wanted to make Carnifexes better, I think you'd just have them at least hitting on threes in combat. Like, come on, look at all those spiky arms. And. Um, uh, they probably don't need minus one damage back. The, the, the little blood surge rule is kind of cool. But uh, I think just give them um, a little bit better combat, and I think they would be in a perfect place. They're also super cheap, like 125 points for a two-up save T9-8 wound dude. Pretty good value, I reckon. Yeah, that, 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 fantastic answer. And um, as Aiden replies, fabulous answer. So couldn't have said it better myself. And look, as well, if you want to flirt with what, what used to be a... Carnifex model, the Screamer Killer. You can play with that as well. They're not bad. They're not yeah. bad. I, I, so, I think Screamer Killers are okay. Like they're they're better now. They're a bit cheaper, and they do cool yeah. things. But I'm always just like, this could have been a Malaceptor plus an extra couple of points. I don't know. Like they they are cool, and I really I'm all about like making Battle Shock work in games. Um, a lot of the lists I build are really kind of centered around Battle Shock, as unreliable as it may be. And Screamer Killer is this thing you can put in that's like it's not only got a direct battle shock attack that is like 18 inch range assault how good's that and it's at neg one and even with all of that stuff around the mechanic that i'm really trying to make work i, I always just find myself being like ah this kind of sucks so i don't know they're almost there i don't know what they need they probably just have the same problem that a lot of other tyrannids combat has which is they're only ap2 and that sucks Anyways, we could go, we could go for a deep dive <laughs> yeah. of all the tutored co- profiles, but well, I digress. We'll go back to talking about the faction perfection element. So, sure. um, during ninth edition, one thing you got used to be able to do was, um, I guess, ally and gene steel cult and have the forces of the mm. hive line. So, but you never did that. So, why did you never ally in gene steel cult for someone who could have? Yeah, I was open to it. Uh, I guess it was kind of weird, right? Like ninth was a bit of a weird one for Tyranids because, uh, it. F- Originally ninth, we just had the eighth, eighth edition codex plus the Psychic Awakening book, and you could ally in GSC then. But GSC, I don't think we're amazing at the start of ninth. Um, and then there was definitely some cool stuff you could do. Like, I'm trying to remember what you could do. You could just have like some units of acolytes that would do. Sh- I think I actually did play a couple of games allying them in. Like I had, what did I do? I had like acolytes with the heavy weapons that were pretty good as tough targets, and they're like rock saws maybe. I can't remember. So I, I tried it once or twice, maybe on TTS. Um, and it was fine, um, but I think I was always kind of, I think this is before I probably started playing big tournaments as well, so it wasn't amazing. But then Tyranids kind of went through this crazy set of releases, right? Like, they were kind of carried by Hive Guard and a couple of things, and the um, Imperial Armor Compendium came out, and you got new stats for, like, the Macarons and the Hierodules, and they were pretty good. And then you got the Leviathan supplement, and it was like, whoa, okay, now we're talking, like, just chuck real hits on whatever you want. And all these crazy, like, uh, whatever they were, like, Warlord traits and stuff. And then Crusher Stampede came out, and that was crazy. And it was crazy because you could combine it with all these other previous crazy rules. Uh, and then that started to really die down. And, I, and that was when I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll pick up GSC. And then the Codex came out, and I was like, oh, now, yeah, okay. And I, I don't think at any point there was, like, I didn't even think about, I, I don't know, I, I know at one point you couldn't ally in GSC to Tyranids towards the end of ninth. I don't know when that started. But I think in my head yeah, it was think- just, like, when the GSC book came out, and especially for things like teams, it was just um, GSC were super solid by themselves, right? So I didn't want to sort of take that away from another player on the team. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. But so for some people, I guess, uh, who are pursuing, like, I guess, that faction perfection sort of thing, like they generally play that one faction. Um, like, oh, it's Eldar. Like, now Eldar can, like, ha- like ally in Yunari elements and Drakari. Would you, like, generally advise people who are, I guess, faction specialists to look into expanding, I guess, into a super faction element? Or would you advise to keep generally in the narrow channels? Oh, no, I think, um, I think absolutely do everything you can to make your list that you're running at that time um, as good as it, as it can be, right? If you've got a style and it would be better to add in, you know, whatever, a couple of boats and a couple of units of players and a troop master, whatever the fuck they're called, go for it. Uh, I, I think I, um, like, it's kind of dumb, but, like, I started getting, I think I started getting better at 40k around when Crusher Stampede came out, not because Crusher Stampede was so broken, it was just because it meant I was playing against way better players because this stupid army rule carried me into higher tables, right? And I'm playing as these oh. hectic players who who know the game really well, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I need to actually, I need to be better to actually beat these guys. Um, uh, yeah, so I think if you can make your list as good as possible, that'll take you to 
better, why higher tables at events, you start playing against these crazy good players who will teach you a lot, even when they're kicking your ass. Most certainly. I think there's something to that, to be said. Like, taking a strong faction and a strong army allows you to... Well, the army and faction can carry you sometimes to levels that you wouldn't otherwise on a different faction army. Um, I'll, ta- I'll, I'll, I'll say it myself. I've played armies of factions that carry me. Like, Thick City Drakari wasn't all because of my yeah. own piloting skills. It was because of that stupid army mechanic. So, but, and it allowed me to do better than maybe I should have. So that's very, very fair. And then when I played armies which are very skill-intensive, I wasn't able to do as well. So... I think there's very much something to be said there. Um, you mentioned there, so being, I guess, your best player and stuff like that. So, um, if you, in, I guess, the ideal universe of you being your best, uh, being your best player, being the best comp 40k player you can be. Do you think you would be a faction specialist, or do you think diversifying is the best way to be? I guess a typical, uh, the best player you can be. Does that make sense? Like uh, being your yeah, best I, player, I, do you think it's better I, I, I to diversify or be uh, a faction specialist? I think it's it's probably best to be diverse, right? Like you're going to learn more about the game. You're going to learn probably more about your own. Like, you know, there's probably a bunch of um, like weaknesses about my own list that I play that I just don't know about because I I just haven't played against that specific person playing this faction that knows this thing, right? So I think I'm definitely missing out on a lot by only playing one army. Um, And I think if you're trying to be like a really, really good player, it's probably best to try a few things because you also might, think oh you know why would i want to play drew Kari? and then you give it a go you're like oh shit this is fun and i'm i'm way more engaged than i was before um like there's and you look at some of these other really like high like skill intensive armies you're like wow that looks like a mind fuck but kind of fun to play especially when you're getting it right so i think um i'm probably not doing the right thing and trying to be the best player i can by, be by playing one army but i'm i'm making the most of it you know i'm sort of uh still putting myself out there and playing lots of players like i like in the build up to last year's ANZ TC, I was just trying to get every single matchup played, right? And multiple of them. Like I I I I built this kind of stupid um ninth edition Kronos monster bash list with like six monsters and a bunch of random shit. And I played like every single matchup and I figured out exactly pretty pretty good in, into good players what the ratings were gonna be. <clears throat> this year I I don't know, it's I guess I've probably spent a bit more time on the like organizational front and I realized like oh shit I, I need to get more practice. So I've just signed up to a bunch of different TTS events and I'm trying to just find games at IRL every time I can. And it's just that kind of um co- not constant but high level of like high quantity of games that uh, will help me kind of understand those factions more and hopefully fill in those gaps um that I don't know about yet from only playing one army. Sure. I, get, like, I don't know. I don't know if I answered the question, Sam. I just kind of started saying no, stuff. But, no, uh, no, you, you did fine. I think you said, <laughs> that's fine. Like I think you said, look, it may to be your optimal best. It's probably best to play other factions because other factions allow you to teach different skill sets. Like, oh, for example, yeah, if you're yeah. a world is a faction specialist, you would not know the nuance of the shooting phase or what was the psychic phase in ninth edition. You wouldn't understand <laughs> yeah, the sure. nuance of positioning and stuff like that. Um, but for being sure. able to play different armies maybe allows you to do that. And obviously, as you said, like, um, guess meta chase to what the top is. But what well, I guess to go into my next question, what are some of, I guess, the pros that you find being a faction specialist compared to people who meta hop? Like, what do you think is some of the biggest benefits for yourself? Um, it's kind of nice when you go into, like, the mirror and you kind of know that, like, I think I know what this dude's army does more than he does. Um, and you never, you never be a dick about it, right? And like you try and help them because you want to make them get better too. But then you can kind of like, you can assess a matchup sometimes better than other people. Um, and because I've played so many um, matchups into kind of the spooky armies at the moment, I can also maybe, I can come in with my weird Tyranid build and be like, I know what your army does. I don't think you know what, you probably know what a standard Tyranid is, like Invasion Fleet List does. You probably don't know what this one does. Um, and you, and, and you can kind of see kind of the, the light bulb go off or like, you know, I don't know, about around two or three. Like, and you can tell when they know like, oh, I see what he's been doing since turn one now. Um, not that I'm some kind of fucking galaxy brain or anything like that. I just run heaps of dumb cheap shit until it dies and I win. Um, so yeah, uh, that's one of the big things I think is just having like a really good all-around understanding. Also like, uh, um, especially for like newer players when you're just starting off, um, sticking with one army is awesome for getting better because you just, you, you learn all the stats, you keep them in your head. Uh, I think, I, I don't think I have enough room in my head for another faction's worth of like data sheet stats. Um, so it's really good just playing a game with your army. You don't need to check your app unless there's some weird stat that comes up, like how many attacks does a Bible have in combat. You can just kind of list it off in your head fairly confidently. Um, and that's like a good way to play faster and learn more. And as soon as you're not having to look up all your stats, you start to learn like yeah, your opponent's stats too. Like you know what all the big scary guns out there are and how far something should move. And that also helps you play because you're like, okay, well, I know that thing moves this far and shoots this far and I stay here and I'm not going to get shot by it. Um, so I think, yeah, just 
me sticking to one army has helped just sort of package away all the tyranny knowledge. I can be pretty confident in it all and it gives me more brain room for uh, the game and uh, other armies to learn what they do. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds um, a very good reasons of why it's best to be a faction specialist. Um, you mentioned there about running some off meta stuff or some off kills of things, and I know that's a very specialist thing for you and the ACT crew. You love your snowflake units, but there's a very good reason for why you do it. So I guess <laughs> as you as you like, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the question is is why so being a faction specialist so sometimes there's generally like a meta army or meta list so like if i know what the elder army is i know what the meta things are but being a faction specialist is it sometimes better to run things which are off kilter or off meta like do you find i guess yeah, better sure. re results in doing such or do you yeah, find for sure. like yeah, yeah i think um like trying to be like um bringing something that's like hard to predict to the table is good. Like I I'm, I'm never going to lie to my opponent and be like, Oh yeah, this thing only moves six and can't advance and charge. And then surprise moves 10 advances and charges. Um, so like you're always fully up front, but you kind of bring stuff that your opponent just, you know, they might not have played this army that plays in that specific way. And, um, and, or, or just this unit that's like, so what does that thing do? Oh, it, it you know, oh, it can do. I get examples like a, a Morlock, right? When it shows up out of Deep Strike, everything within 12 can take some mortals, maybe a Battleshock test. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, most of the time it might do, on average, it does two mortal wounds to a unit, but it hits everything within 12, right? And then like, I've had, I've had opponents, even like pretty skilled ones, they play their game and they've left this spot like in the middle of, you know, they've got like a big kind of U shape of an army because they want to stay out of the middle. The Morlock shows up and hits about 10 different units and all of a sudden it's done 20 mortal wounds and they're like, oh shit, okay, I need to I need to not make that mistake again. Um so yeah, bring kind of uh, and, and Morlocks aren't exactly like off meta or anything like that. But um yeah I think there's definitely and it, and it comes back to that thing about knowing all the kind of tyranid stuff in the back of your head. It's just I I, I can kind of build the plan as I go being like, okay, I'm going to do this weird thing with this weird unit. And if my opponent reacts in some way, I like be like, okay, that, that can be something I can leverage further down the track. But um, I like bringing all sorts of weird shit, except, except if they just kind of suck. Like if, if they're just overpriced garbage, like um, what sucks? I'm just looking at my model cabinet. Um, Turn effects. Know, uh, I don't know. I think that, I think they're back in an okay place. Uh, they, they got cheaper, right? Like they still aren't as good as they were, but uh, at least they're not over 200 points. Like the Harpy and the Hive Crone, they have like some play, but they're just like a billion points. So they kind of suck. Um, I don't know. There's some other stuff out there that kind of blows. I'm looking at my Demon Care on sadly, and I can't take my eyes off him because he's legended. Poor boy. Poor boy. Oh, no. oh, well, he can be repurposed as a Norn, I'm sure. And be I, 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 I've, I've rebased him as a Norn and he's huge. He's, he's so big. He, he doesn't fit on the WTC table. Uh, unless you want to like scrape the paint off him, so I think he's just getting retired, unfortunately. Um, but I've I've got some very fond memories of my Dima Karen, and I'm sure a lot of people have some very uh, unhappy memories about my Dima Karen. But all fond memories. The Dima Karen has never done anything wrong ever, and don't quote me on that at all. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess I so. Are you go. You go, Roman. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, yeah. I think the worst thing I ever did was I was playing um, one of the guys on the team, Aaron, and his Chaos Knights, and this is back in before the ninth edition codex, but it was like after Crush's Stampede. So you had this Demon Caron that like moved 12. I roll the six for its advance, so it's moved 18. And then it gets double moved by the Swarm Lord. And I think you could advance it then as well. And I rolled another six. So it's like the Demon Caron which moved 36 inches, ignoring terrain. And it was just like, oh, shit, <laughs> that's, that's bad. Like straight up to his like back corner where he had this, this Night Tyrant feeling very safe. I was like, hey, this, this Demon Caron. Anyway, I, there's things like that, right? Like things, stupid shit like that you don't forget just cause like, uh, it's fun. Anyway. Always fun memories. You have always fun memories of little fun game situations and moments when things happen. So that's, that's great. Um, for events and stuff like that, so obviously people know or recognize, hey, I know Rowan's going to play Tyranids. Does that, do you think that's a negative thing or um, do you think it's uh, like a weakness that people know what you're taking or do you think it's maybe a strength because that people have to spend time studying what the fuck Tyranids do because I know Rowan's <laughs> going to take them? Um, I don't think that is, I mean, that's not a concern for me at all. Like, I, you know, Anyone who who vaguely knows me assumes I bring Tyranids. If they want to like skew their not, I don't think they're going to skew their list to play Tyranids because they're going to like you know fifty person GT. That kind of seems counterintuitive. But I don't really think about it at all. If, if anything, despite the fact people know I play Tyranids, I still rock up to a table and my opponent's like, okay, so what's that do? Um, I just like I don't think that's like a a mindset many people are in. And if they are, cool. That means I don't have to take as long explaining what I, my army does. Um, 
Yeah, like I don't, I don't think that's a thing that happens really, especially in, in, in our kind of community or even anywhere in Australia. Like maybe uh, at like the, the super high level, something like that might happen, but I, th I think it's all pretty chill. And if someone goes, ah, oh, Rowan, you're playing Tyranids, right? I just give them a thumb lip. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. So uh, we have another question. So, so from Bardia Wargaming, Jack, so the absolute chat himself. So what does Rowan think sure. about Nids having zero damage this edition? Like, what do you think? Is uh, that nah, yeah. a fair statement? <laughs> Uh, I, I love it when someone like wholeheartedly believes in that, <laughs> and then they're like, and and then they they kind of find out that they're wrong. Uh, Tyranids have weird damage. It like it's there. It just kind of takes a bit of digging to find it sometimes. Which I don't know. You compare like uh, some of the other factions, which kind of just press a button and your unit it, it has some holes in it. Compared to Tyranids, we have to jump through all these hoops, and then still maybe you don't kill something. Um, yeah, look, it's not ideal. I don't know. It's 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 still fun, and there's still lots of fun damage to be found. But um, I th I think. There could it, it's it's just hard comparing Tyranids to other uh, other armies, right? Because there's so many synergies that you really kind of have to hit if you want to kill things. And there are like there are still games that I play with a fairly like innocuous looking list where I can still table my opponent and I have. But there's also some games where it's like I know that I'm not killing a unit all game, and I'm like, okay, well I just need to I need to lose my units at just the right pace that I make it through five turns. Um, yeah, like there could uh, again, it kind of comes back to the things you kind of wish you see. Like I, I think there could be um, maybe a, a crumb of extra AP in a few places in the codex, maybe a bit of extra strength. I think uh, we've got like this abundance of strength nine AP two three damage in the army on the like the big spiky arms of all our monsters. And it's kind of like oh, that's weird. Um, I think they could maybe I don't know yet. Yeah, drizzle a little bit of strength ten in there, maybe a little bit of AP three on some of the really big shit. Um, and I, I don't know, Games Workshop have shown in the last data slate that they aren't afraid to change a couple of stat lines here and there, whether or not they hit Tyranids with that. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know what their kind of thinking balance-wise for Tyranids, but extra damage would... I mean, from my perspective, more damage is great. Cool. I can do even more damage now, and I'm already doing an okay amount. Um, yeah. I don't know. Whatever, Jackson. I, I enjoy yeah. your Eldar, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, but get more damage to only unleash ultimate power and some real, to, to get some hard hitting stuff. So that'll be, uh, I don't know yeah. if we want to actually see that world. But um, you mentioned there <laughs> before, so the Tyranids obviously were a release faction. And obviously, traditionally, like, the factions or codices that come out at the very start have sort of lingered and are sort of like teetered off. Like, so obviously, last edition, Necrons came up initially and then they had a, a rise at the very end when some big major changes happened. And then they sort of yeah. were okay towards the end. So for yourself with Tyranny, it's like, what do you envision, like, as the Codex has now been out for, I guess, a couple of months now, or a couple of months now, and, like, there's been some changes? Yeah. So, so what, like, how, do what What are you hoping for Tyranny long term? Are you just going to be exploring some builds, as you, like, from time to time, or, and just hmm. go with ebbs and flows? Um, I mean, I'll, yeah, like, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely keep trying different things. Um, I will... Yeah, like even now, like I'm trying these. Uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of fallen in Norn with, in love with like a fallen in Norn, fallen in love with Norn emissaries and simulators, uh, just because they're kind of dope models and they have cool rules and they're just big stompy Godzilla monsters. Um, so I'm just I'll, I'll I'll keep finding new shit to play around with. Um, with regards to how like the faction kind of evolves in the next, I don't know what two years of tenth, two and a half, whatever they end up doing. Yeah, like you can already see. I don't know. I don't think there's any like. Uh, creep already in the codex is maybe like a little bit you can kind of tell that um especially with the indexes when they came out like they had teams of people working on set books and other people working on other ones and then the person working on eldar who was just told to make things better i guess uh but that's, that's a style joke um but yeah i i don't know i think if, if things kind of keep progressing in that the codex sometimes tones an index down a little bit like you're kind of seeing in the last couple, like there's been a couple of things that kind of take a step back and add a few little things in elsewhere. I think Tyranids will be fine for a little while. Like they're still, um, I think they're still very competitive and have lots of competitive builds. I think that's the coolest thing is Tyranids have a huge uh, unit range and you can still make pretty cool uh, armies that are different to what you're seeing at the top tables. So um, I think at least for the moment, unless they start dropping like some cracked codexes, Tyranids do fine. They might need a little love touch here and there uh, in a couple of data slates time just to, yeah, like I said, maybe adjust a few stat lines, maybe cheapen a few things. There's still some wildly overcosted units in, in, in the in the codex at the moment, but um, I think just light touches. I, I see a lot of people uh, complain about Shadow in the Warp as an army rule, uh, which I can understand people being frustrated about because you compare it to the army rules of other factions. 
uh, let's say like Oath of Moment, Space Marines, point at a thing, get rerolls to hit, and you get that cool benefit every turn. Uh, whereas Tyranids is, I mean, there's Synapse, which is good. I like Synapse, don't get me wrong. But Shadow on the Warp, which is a thing you do once, and you have no control over, you have limited control over um, what happens and how to uh, benefit from it. Um, so I could I could see, I can understand people being frustrated about that. I don't know what the balance to that is. I don't know. Maybe you have an inbuilt minus one when you do shadows, or I see some crazy ideas like uh, shadows is you choose a unit, enemy unit every turn. It's battle shock. I think that's way too strong. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I could see them maybe adjusting a couple things about that army rule, given they've touched on other detachment abilities in data slates. Um, and cool. Uh, change is also fun. Um, it's probably like the funnest part of every edition, right? When you get new rules. So if they make some changes, cool. If they don't, that's also fine. I think there'll be plenty of fun tiered things to fuck around with. Yeah, more than fair. So it sounds like obviously because of the depth of tiering, it allows you to explore things um, and enjoy stuff as it comes ebbs and flows and where they've got the highs and the lows and uh, you're still having fun exploring, which is all you can ask for, right? So, but I guess what, if that time comes, and we hope it doesn't happen because Rowan, I want you to keep playing tiering and enjoying them. But if that time comes yeah. where the army is down the gutter, your friends have had enough of you playing tiering, that maybe <laughs> when you make an army switch. So, does that sound about Hopefully right? Hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully that doesn't happen too soon. I think I, I definitely do buckle to peer pressure though. So if like if I literally get start getting, <laughs> I was gonna say abused, but I kind of already get abused. Uh, if I get more abuse and it starts getting a little bit more personal, I'll probably yeah, have a little cry and then start a new army. But uh, I'm yeah. not near that yet. So if I can keep it coming. Uh, you, better, you better make sure whoever bully, uh, peer pressures Rowan into playing a new army, you make better sure you love that new army because Rowan's going to keep playing it for the next <laughs> little while, I'm sure, right? So, look, if you it's yeah. going to be Exodite Elder, you're going to be playing a lot of a lot of Exodites. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see, wait and see. So, um, for someone, I guess, talking, I guess, faction specialization. So, maybe you got lucky. I would say it sounds a bit rude to say lucky in collecting tunes, but do you think there are certain factions which lean better? to being a faction specialist in, in, in compared to others? Or do you think most, any people can make a faction work if they're a specialist? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think um, I think just about every faction has that capability as long as they... I mean, yeah, like, look at look at some people we have in... Um, like, again, I'll, I'll use, like, the Greek as an example with his Admech. Like, he's a fantastic player, fantastic Admech player, because he commits so much time and uh, thought to them. He can perform really well. Like I, I was about to say, uh, you know, if a, if a faction kind of sucks, maybe it's not ideal. But um, I mean, look, the faction sucks at the moment. He's still doing really well with it, uh, and it'll be really competitive in a year's time or whatever. And he'll be even better at it. Um, so I, I don't know. Maybe there's a couple of factions out there that just aren't suited for it. Maybe like really small factions where there's just like I don't know. Like, are there any people mono harlequining at the moment and trying to make it work? I don't know. Like, uh, but I mean, that clearly worked last edition, right? And there were some crazy Parlequin plays you could do. So I think the best thing to do, like the reason Tyranids work so well is, like I said before, they have a huge model range. So even when shit gets nerfed, you have things to fall back on. Uh, so I think army, like the, the bigger a range is, the um, the better it'll be for being a kind of your only faction. Um, and because metas will always change, right? And things get nerfed and things get buffed. So as long as you've got, you know, a big model range to fall back on, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything that's unspecializable out there. So yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. I think it's, you know, I think you nailed the nailed on the head where you said like Harlequins or Leagues of Votan is someone I think about when being a faction specialist in them. It's like yes, you can absolutely you can. There's some cool things you can do, but maybe that depth isn't there or that ability to adapt on the fly. So for example, if maybe some core units from Votan get pulled, mm -hmm. like or maybe your Sagittors or your Hecaton Land Fortress become too much, they don't do enough. Then the army dynamic doesn't work well. Uh, whereas in Tyranids, yeah. maybe you could uh, go to something else. Like, okay, I don't need to rely on my transports as much anymore. Like, no, Tyranids don't yeah. traditionally rely on transports. But as an example, yeah. like you can do other things. Whereas maybe for Votan or a small army range, if that fundamental thing doesn't work, it's kind of shit and it falls for it, like, sure. falls off a cliff. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. Because again, if you have a small army range and all of a sudden two units suck, you're probably also not going to have fun anymore. Like if you're yeah. stuck yeah. running, you know, good example, leagues of Votan to say the transports suck, you're stuck running you know, dudes that run or move five inches a turn and maybe do some shooting. Like, you got to still keep it interesting. So, um, like, the easiest thing is just have an army that you love, right? Like, and something you really enjoy painting and putting on the table. And, um, like, I'm sure there's, like, like yeah, there's, there's, there's players all over that are... And, and yeah, I think also having practice with other armies is also good. Like, I know a lot of people probably have, you know, their second army being custodians or space marines, something like that. Um, and it's probably also good to have, like, a, yeah, 
something to break up the, uh, I don't want to say monotony, but, you know, if you're only playing one army day after day, week after week, I'll let it play every day, but it's very good to have another army to kind of take a break with. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think that's pretty, pretty fair. Like, I think it's fair to have another army. It's probably to something I should look take into. A break with. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so you should look into. It sounds like you're 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 at a tipping point or a breaking point for it happening. So maybe, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's an awful show. <laughs> but um, I think it's something to be said though about like I guess exploring a different army. I know in the gym sense, like your the famous Arnold Schwarzenegger quote is like uh, to train a different muscle or like test the body, like to try and like if you just did um, bench press the whole time, like you'd maybe develop your chest sure. in one way. But if you do incline bench press or a different body thing, it allows your body to train in a better way. And maybe doing a yeah. oh, different army allows you to do something different and explore yeah, different things as yeah. we discussed earlier. So um, I, think, I think so for sure. Like I think like sometimes I'll be watching a game and I'll be like, I don't know. I thought, I thought one thing is like an example whenever I'm playing Tyranids, I, like I'm never afraid to like throw away a unit if it's going to be for the good of, you know, that, 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 that game or that turn. And sometimes I watch other, other game, other factions play and I'm like, why are these people so attached to their units? Like, and I get it, like every faction has different game plans, but in, in my head, sometimes I'm watching armies being like, man, they should just throw away this unit because it kind of locks down that plan or it locks down these points. So, um, yeah, like I guess that's a bit of a reverse thing, right? Like me looking at the factions play, having these skills I've learned playing Tyranids, like skill, a skill to throw away your units. I don't know. Um, but yeah, for sure. I totally agree. I think I think probably playing other armies, watching other armies play, like even like on um, some of these uh, like YouTube channels that get out like a couple of battle reps a week. I'll watch them. I, I, like whatever army they are, I'll watch them. And that's like the best way to learn, like or other than playing it yourself to get that much knowledge on those armies played at a high level. So uh yeah i don't know where i'm going with this but uh no, no i think you just re- good old ra- <laughs> rowan rambling it's fine rambling, you, you, yeah, I don't know, you're spe- speaking wisdom and wise words for us fellow listeners and just who are willing to listen and uh, or maybe forced to listen but no i'm kidding so um <laughs> what <laughs> so for people who maybe who are like look i want to get better at my one faction and become a faction specialist and such what advice would you give to someone maybe who is setting themselves on the path to faction specialization Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let me have a think. So I think, um, I think like I've kind of touched on it a few times before, but like have fun. Don't just uh, take like this crazy net list that does really well at events and then just be like, okay, this is my new list and I'm going to run it. I'm going to figure out how it works. Like figure out how it works, but don't make it like a chore. Um, yeah. Just make sure you're having fun with your games. Even like, I, I always find it a good measure when I'm getting like pumped, like when I'm getting absolutely smashed in the game. I'm like, am I, am I still like cheerful? Am I still like a fun place person to play against when I'm getting like my, um, shit kicked in. Um, I try to be, and I, and and then I worry that if I'm actually having a bad time, assuming my opponent's not a piece of shit. Um, if 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 I'm not having a good time when I'm losing, I'm probably not approaching it in the right mindset, and I might not be playing the right kind of list for me at the mo- at that time. So I think, yeah, just make sure you're having fun, even 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 the worst uh, worst kind of games, and and mix it up all the time. Try different lists, try things that sound interesting, and find out they suck, and then you're like, okay, well now I know that. Uh, also, assuming you're painting your own models, um, come up with a scheme that is not like simple, but just kind of you can get it done fairly quickly. Like my my Tyranids, I sort of um, I don't think they're too simple, but I can paint models that kind of scheme fairly quickly if I need to. Um, so if you're kind of sticking to one faction, you want to build up one a big collection, just yeah, keep it fairly straightforward. Find something that looks really cool, something you can smash out, because um, inevitably you get most of your models painted like the couple of days before an event and you're like okay, okay sure, I, gotta, I gotta get this shit done um and find like uh, assuming if you're a newer player just find like a community to get stuck into like if it's your local store or whatever or uh even just like the faction channel on your local discord whatever it is and just start conversations and get people talking uh, and ask questions and be like hey i want to do this is this dumb maybe not that question but like hey i want to try this because i really love this model what's the best way to use it um and find things out for yourself as well i think the biggest thing i've learned from <clears throat> especially like there are unfortunately some communities like i said earlier that, where people just go like i uh, don't even try this it sucks uh and i'll put it on the table i'll be like man this rocks what are people talking about um just because something doesn't seem right on paper there could be a fun way of playing with it on the table um and yeah i don't know just love, love your army as well if, you, if you're going to choose one make it something you love and something that you're not going to get uh not necessarily not, not tired of but um yeah, just something you're really interested in, something that you have fun with, and uh, also take breaks every now and again. Yeah, that's I think some sage advice and wisdom from Rowan. I think, Rowan I, I think that's probably like something to do, something to do, like no matter what it is, even at 40k, is just take breaks. Like uh, 
I am like after ANZ TC this year. There's like like I don't know heaps of events after that anyway that I still want to go to. But I am for sure going to be taking like a piece of shit list of all of those. That, so so I can just like take a step back and be like, it doesn't matter anymore. I've kind of done the big thing for the year at least for another like four or five months, and I can just chill out, have fun with a fun list, playing fun games against chill people. Um, yeah, and, and and for me that's going to be like a break, right, from taking it a bit more seriously. Um, so find what constitutes a break for you, whether that's just dropping 40k for a few weeks or a month, or kind of relaxing into something a bit more low key. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. So I guess that so no, that's that's fine. So I just want to maybe like before we wrap things up. So just to elaborate a bit more there about taking a break. So for you, because being like as a faction specialist, taking a break does it allow you to sort of like it just reset your mindset or just appreciate things otherwise? Like what does it allow you to do yeah, by taking I think a break? So. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 absolutely. Um I think when I came up with my um like Kronos list at the uh, Fae and ZTC last year, it was after me kind of being like, ah, uh, is Tyranids going to work out for NZTC? Maybe I'll take a few weeks off. I think it was like, I think it was actually a game I played against you, Sam, where I came up with the idea where you had your Drukari and I was like, what what could I take that'll be like really annoying for Sam? So I took all these like flamers and harpies and all this bullshit that you couldn't interact with. And I played that. I was like, that was pretty good. <laughs> I might need to uh, put a bit more thought into this. And that was after like a couple of weeks off. So, I mean, yeah, sorry about that, Sam. But uh, <laughs> it was like, yeah, I think some of the best ideas can come from that, right? If you just sort of, yeah, take a step back and reset your mind a little bit. And um, and at the end of the day, it's 40K as well, right? You don't want to be losing sleep over it, even for something like ANZTC or bigger events where you all kind of have high expectations. It's just a game. And it's really good kind of... Um, like mental health practice just to take a step back whenever you think it's getting too much 100 as you said before this is a hobby for 99.99 percent of us it's not a, a lifetime job or anything like that so it's great to take a break and even then if it's a job take a break reset and recalibrate per se and then um you better be able to appreciate things more and look maybe come up some good ideas like oh you know how many people have like that amazing idea just before they go to bed or the shower or like just think of some cool ideas as things are winding things down or just off the cuff yeah. so yeah right write, write um, those so... ideas down too though like i i had an idea once i can't re- i think it was like i don't know if it was when i was going to bed or like in the middle of the night i had this idea it's like ah oh, man i need to do that next time i play like i need to have my like my neuro lecture my death leaper and whatever it is like this ah, game winning easy and i fell asleep or whatever and i cannot remember it, it was like it's, it was really good in the moment i mean i had like man god i'm gonna be next level when i do that uh and I thought, so, yeah <laughs> Oh, well, have been that good, I guess. I'll, I'll, it'll come up again maybe sometime so anyways um so before we wrap things up rowan so really appreciate your time this has been a fantastic conversation are there any final plugs or shout outs that you want to have or maybe if someone oh, is yeah. curious to ask you questions where could they do so oh for sure so um i definitely have shout out um just the local community here uh i'm putting I guess one of the reasons I'm not playing quite as much 40k at the moment, like still probably way too much, but I'm putting a bit of effort trying to like do a bit of community stuff down here. And that's really building on the foundations that you helped set, Sam. So first of all, thank you, Sam, for doing so much work in Canberra before uh, becoming like a trader and fucking off to Queensland. Um, and that's kind of building up the local league, the 2k league, uh, the kind of monthly RTTs we do around here and trying to make them just as, as good as they can be and get people keen and wanting to play more 40k because... In the ACT, we're kind of um, bottom of the pack compared to the other states in terms of um, size, just number of players. Like we've got these hectic players. At the end of the day, we've got like one, I don't know, tenth of the community. Some of the other states have probably less. Um, so I'm just trying to get more people playing, more people sort of having fun, and then taking that next step up to being competitive too. Because uh, that's just what I want to see. I see more community, and that means more people trying out to be on the team, and then everything just gets better and better, and our ceiling gets higher and higher. So first of all, yeah, ACT community, love it. And I'm, I'm loving everything I'm doing uh, to be involved. Um, the ACT team, uh, you guys all rock. And I'm really happy to be on the team with all of you. Um, and then I guess also my, my cute little club of uh, butt stuff, because me and three other dudes. And uh, I don't even know if they're watching or even playing 40K at the moment. Um, but I'm sure they'd appreciate the shout out. Uh, and if you have any questions about Tyranids, uh, I don't know, find me on Facebook or Discord or whatever. Um, just send me a message. I'm always happy to chat. 
Sounds great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Ron's very, very insightful and gives some sage advice. And I appreciate the kind words said before. And I appreciate you and Andrew carrying on the torch and doing even bigger and greater things. So, um, look, it's, it's amazing to see how the community is going. And that's all we want, right? At 40K is people growing the community, enjoying themselves playing some with some toy aliens, I guess, in this stage, sense. Yeah, some toy, toy soldiers. But um, whatever it makes you happy, per se. And without. Well, do, do that so um yeah really really appreciate you coming on and i guess for people who maybe want to listen more about this topic um i know this topic was inspired a bit from what so simon did so recently on ethos podcast he did uh t- talk about faction specialization and then there was also a recent one the six plus plus show did about um being a meta chaser versus faction specialization so um those are the links in the description for people who are curious um and now we're just gonna wrap things up with a little plug so before we wrap, uh, so last first one is D6 Designs AU. So I know Rowan. So those are the ACT 40K dice we've oh, got. Oh hell so yeah, they're, they're they're amazing, right? Like they're cracks. How, they're cracks. They? They're also, like they're they're definitely um, weighted dice. So buy them. They're really good. Yeah, and if, even if with the weighted dice, I mean, what what don't we love more than actually getting it for cheaper? So use code DU40KL for ten percent off. Like even better, right? Like if you can get cracked hell dice, yeah. not cheap, toilet dice, cracked, cheap but broken just, dice. Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not toilet dice broken, but like, you know, they roll, you see that logo a couple more times and you then maybe you should have. And it looks pretty as all hell. I love his um, miracle dice and what you've done for the ACT dice. It's mm. like, mwah, like chef's kiss looks amazing. For sure. so. J- just watch out if there's a dude called Joe Locke rolling them because he rolls. <laughs> he fucked. may not speak much, but he's a weapon. He is an absolute he's weapon. A fucking weapon, dude. Fuck Joe. He's Silent a killer. Kid. Uh, the next one we have, so for the official down on the 40k circuit, is CX Custom 3D uh, and Terrain. So they do a bunch of terrain uh, MDF stuff. So they have the WT set, WTC sets and the GW sets. And oh, look, I have my own set, which I've literally primed the other weekend. And it comes together greatly. So I highly, highly recommend for people. And they're the official tournament, oh, sorry, the official down on the 40k circuit. Sponsor, so I really, really appreciate that for the train. Um, so please shoot up Daniel and a link for CX Custom 3D and Train is in the description below. Uh, second last is Patreon.com. So obviously to fund uh, this these sort of content podcasts and stuff like that. So for myself, but also if you want cheap early access to down 40k events. So I uh, that are hosted in the New South Wales region uh, and all be part of the circuit. So I know Rowan the recent Grim Series events are part of the circuit. If I'm not mistaken, correct the down 40k circuit. Yeah, so you yeah, get points right. and. Yeah. super cool, cute rewards so um look if you want to yeah. get some early access and some cheap prices off the tickets you can hit us up at patreon.com forward slash down under 40k and yeah so hit, hit us up there there's as cheap for us five bucks a month so any little bit helps so really really appreciate it then last but not least we have emperor so emperor.cc uh they help the official prize sponsor of both the uh, the down the 40k arc tts and it's through their support we can offer great value prizes to all the players so check them out for all your miniature and hobby needs so hooroo boom and uh you can use the 40k um to help show support and they have up to 20 percent off so yeah really really good and i've definitely bought from there and that's been fantastic and sometimes you get some stuff a little bit early which is all we love so yeah fantastic um so that's everything for this podcast. Really, really appreciate you, Rowan, for the chat. And I hope people enjoy this one and talk to you all next.